Um, sing, so Jeffrey, sing. I was like, you know what? No, my husband says I dance like a Sims character, so <laughs> I will spare you guys of that. <laughs> and he's kind of right, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> this is the face. I, I give enthusiastic facial movements while I'm dancing poorly. But uh, this is from my uh, book, Burn Down the Ground. Um, and the, the book centers around my deaf family and my father, my relationship. And my father is in jail for 20 years, as some of you uh, know, for a very violent crime. But, um, this is from chapter 16. Uh, Mom said I came out of the womb with a microphone in my hand. You weren't even two years old, but you were talking and using sign language, and you told everyone you were going to be a movie star when you grew up. But only one acting opportunity had presented itself during our, eight, uh, our time in the backwoods of Montgomery, Texas, on Boar's Head Road. Uh, I was only eight years old, and Mom informed me I was headed to an audition. I had no idea what play I was reading for, or what an audition was, or what getting the part might even entail. Now, before moving to Montgomery, I had snagged the lead in the second grade school pageant, and I had led a group of fellow third grade girls in a brilliant rendition of Silent Night in American Sign Language. Now, my mother, on the other hand, had never performed a day in her life, but I still listen to her advice. Now remember to speak loud and clear. That would be a cinch. I had to do that around deaf people all the time. <laughs> now a hearing person expresses feelings and emotions by changing the, uh, the tone and intensity in their voice. But fluent speakers of American Sign Language, or ASL, they pick up differences in word meaning using visual cues. For example, Nice work, or nice work. That's a big difference, right? <laughs> now, as a coda, a child of deaf adults, it was normal for me to use these exaggerated facial movements and expressions when I was dealing with deaf family and friends. The problem was, is that I hadn't learned how to drop these traits when around hearing people. So my animated speaking became kind of a unique accent. So at the theater, I took my place around the, at the center of a wide circle of auditioning actors. When it was my turn, I read, or should say shouted, the lines with intense facial expressions and wild arm gestures. I have made up my mind to lead a different life from other girls and different from ordinary housewives. My start has been so full of interest and that is the sole reason why I have to laugh at the hilarious side of the most dangerous moments. With frantic motions, the director waved for me to stop. Okay, thank you, thank you. Oh, she yelled, well, Camry. She cleared her throat and bit her upper lip to suppress this bubbling laughter. You enunciate very well, and you certainly can project. Glancing around the room, I noticed the other actors were exchanging astonished glances, covering their mouths and snickering. I wasn't sure what was so funny. I spoke loudly and clearly, just as Mom had instructed, and the director had agreed. I had nailed it, right? Well, if I had been auditioning for Annie, I may have gotten the part. <laughs> Unfortunately, I had been auditioning for the role of Anne Frank. <laughs> she was trying to keep quiet. <laughs> the Hitler youth than a Jewish girl trying to survive the Holocaust. My mother was undaunted by the rejection and gave me a pep talk during the ride home. Well, it's just one audition, Camry. You cannot hit if you don't swing. <laughs> yeah, never mind that I was swinging at a freaking outside-the-box pitch, but 
Uh, Texas was a competitive place. Everything from football to using handheld calculators was an aggressive face-off organized by the University Interscholastic League, also known as UIL. Now, after skipping numerous tryouts, I finally confronted my fear of auditions in my junior year of high school, in which the casting called for Richland High's UIL production of Tom Jones. To my delight, I landed the supporting role of Miss Western. The cast and crew of Tom Jones had magical chemistry. That spring, we won zone, district, area, and regional UIL competitions. Now, for the first and only time in our school's history, our troop was qualified for the state finals in Austin, Texas, at the University of Texas. It was such a big deal that all the actors' parents, even my mom and dad, made the trip south to see us compete. Ours was the first play to be presented that day. We turned in a respective performance. And after the final show, we awaited the judge's decision. The university theater students presented a parody of all the competing plays. The outlandish and at times borderline indecent parody had us heaving with laughter. Later, the judges took their seats for the award ceremony. I sat chatting with friends when I heard familiar guttural noises and high-pitched nonsensical sounds of my father, but they were reverberating over the theater's sound system. To my horror, Dad had climbed up onto the stage and was now doing his best gyrating Elvis impression, which was like, no, 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 no. Gasps and giggles rippled through the audience. Seated next to me, my friend Scott asked, Hey, Carrie, isn't that your dad? Shh! I hissed and sank down into my seat. It is, Scott Gaffaud. Oh my God, what is he doing? <laughs> I felt nauseated as I watched the spectacle unfold. The MC rushed from the stage, from the wings, and tried to wrest the microphone from my father's hands. This struggle went on for an excruciating five seconds before Dad finally let go. But, rather than make a quick exit, he continued performing. He sang while shaking his hips and swinging his arms in wild giant moves to his, strum his imaginary guitar. Breathless, the MC wheezed into the mic. If he belongs to you, would somebody get this monkey off the stage? <laughs> Mom was standing in the back of the theater with her hearing aids turned off and had no idea what was happening. And then finally, she sprinted up to the front of the theater, scrambled up the steps as my father took his bows <laughs> to stunned laughter and a smattering of applause. As he, she escorted him down the aisle, Dad waved and pum pumped his fist like he was champion of the entire competition. <laughs> Order restored, the award ceremony got underway, and to my disappointment, Richland did not place. Uh, my friends filed out of the auditorium, but I chose to hang back and, uh, before I went to meet my parents. I didn't want anyone to see me talking to the monkey. My father clapped when I stepped into the lobby. Bravo, he signed, and he patted my back, jerking my shoulder away. I was like, why did you do that? And he said, what? What? Dad looked affronted. Why'd you go up on the stage? This is state. He said, well, what the? The other kids, they got up there and acted all crazy. We reenacted some of the lewd body spoofs of the university students. Well, they were supposed to be there. It was part of the show. Well, who cares? It was funny. People were laughing and they clapped for me. <laughs> yeah, Dad was genuinely flabbergasted that I was not abused by his antics. He had no idea what he'd done wrong. He'd seen a bunch of kids get up there and be silly on stage and figured he'd have a turn. Representing my school had been this in this prestigious competition was my proudest accomplishment, and Dad was treating it like we were in an open mic at a bar. <laughs> Putting the event behind me turned out to be impossible. My father's theatrical stage debut and the story of Deb Elvis quickly became legend. <laughs>